Hi, my name is Konstantin Magnus and in this tutorial we are going to create a procedural volleyball using side effects Houdini. The way it works is we are going to create a box with lots of subdivisions, put some colorful stripes on it, spherify it, split it up and extrude each stripe and fuse and subdivide it later on. But now let's do this in detail, so I just set up a new document, create a geometry container, which I can already call volleyball, dive inside, delete the file node, and set up a box. The box should be set to polygon mesh, so we get a few divisions, and most of the fun is going to be created inside an attribute wrangle, which will be called stripes. I set this to primitives and first of all I want to control the number of polygons my box has. So I will just say I need an integer which means full numbers like 0, 1, 2 and 3 and not 1.5 or something. And a channel integer which will be called stripes as well. So let's just click on this little button here and we get full numbers. And this should be, this parameter should be copied to the divisions of the box. So I just right click and choose paste relative references. Now I just don't want to have like just four stripes, but I will multiply it by four. So you can see it working here. And um, because there's always like one more polygon needed, I will just say plus one, because 17 divisions means you get 16 polygons. This is why you mostly have to add one here. So let's just copy the whole line and use tab to jump and paste into the next fields. So now you can see it working. And if we go to zero, it breaks. So let's just go to edit parameter interface and just block the number below uh, 1 and I will go up to 8 I think. So let's hit accept and the next value I would like to have is a vector value which means three float values called bbox and the bbox will be just a gradient from one edge to the next ranging from 0 to 1 in each direction. And a really common function that does this job is called rel bbox. It should work on this geometry we're just working on, on. So I just press 0 and it should be based on the position of each primitive. <clears throat> if we would like to visualize this, we just set the, vector, the color vector to bbox. So this means it's an attribute which is actually shown down here later and bbox and stuff like that without the add sign will not show up there. And what we get by, by bbox is now visualized, so nice gradients. <clears throat> now additionally, we... Oh no, let's just work on that. So when I take bbox and multiply it by the number of stripes, I get something which is in this case three times brighter. And I will take this calculation and seal it so it's basically rounding it upwards so you can see here I have nice color fields basically like square shapes and to make it dark again I divide it by the number of stripes again so it ranges from 0 to 1. I can also deactivate the, the lighting so we can see it a little better. Now another interesting thing we were going to need is we will need to we, to, we will need to work on normals. So I will just set uh, the normals to ABS, and let me just illustrate the difference between at n and at n set to absolute. We will quickly visualize CD again. This is what the normals look like. So we're normals are basically pointing away from the surface 
but also on the back sides in negative directions, hence the dark color. So when we set this to ABS, let me just turn the camera around, uh, as soon as I set this to ABS, it will also turn bright, so we have the same colors on each side. <clears throat> so this is all I need for my calculations. Let's just um, look at the stripes again. So now my problem is I would like to have horizontal stripes here, vertical ones on this side, and again horizontal ones on the top. So we need to mess with the NML basically, or rather the B box because this is what's being used in the coloring. So I will ask whether certain NML components like NML.Z are pointing away, like when they are bigger than zero, they are then they are pointing in this direction. And if this is the case, I will change a certain VBOX component, in this case Y to zero. So this way all of a sudden I get stripes instead of squares because I just deleted basically one component or I set it to zero, one component of VBOX. So that way the di gradient disappears. So now we can do this with nml.y as well. We can ask whether it's bigger than zero and then say, okay, if this is the case, then vbox.x should be set to zero as well. And now you can see one um, component, or one gradient disappear after another. And the last line, we'll just use nml.x and change vboxz to zero, so that way I have stripes all over the place. Now one problem is, no, I think this is how we can work. The colors are not as beautiful as before, but anyways, it should work. Um, now what I would like to do is, you can tell now I have four polygons for each stripe, which is exactly what we want, but I would like to split them up along the borders, along the color changes. And there's a command for this we can use and it's called split. You can either split along vertices or primitives. We are working on primitives as you can tell. So the primitive split will just be set to the attribute color and now we should be good to go. Let's try this with the explode view sop and now we split it up our box. Of course we don't want a box but rather a sphere so before the split let's just work on the position of the points. We can basically verify them by setting each point position to its normalized position so that way all the positions will be unified, they will have the same distance from the center. And um, you could additionally um, bring in a parameter for the size, so because this way the sphere is way too big. So let me just set up a float called size, which will be asking the user for input. So you can set up a channel float called size click on this button and of course we need to make sure that the diameter is not the radius so take half of it as the size and we will just multiply the position by the size value so that way we can set this exactly to the size of an official volleyball. I just press L for sorting the nodes and now we should be good to go when we want to poly extrude each stripe. So we can give it a little distance and a little inset to see it's working. And of course we should use same values such as a little distance 
and a little inset, maybe something like this. Now we see we have really clear topology, but when I was to subdivide this now, there would be tiny holes in between. So before we subdivide it, we should fuse everything together. There's nothing we need to do there, just fusing it. And let's look at this under lighting conditions. And if needed, you can also add some normal later on um, in case you experience any problems. So let's press L again, spacebar H to see it all working and now the ultimate test would be to play around with the number of stripes and see whether it breaks or not.